Cha 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 cha. Hi, everybody. Oh, this is people's favorite topic today. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think this topic <clears throat> tends to be one of the best ones because people love the 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 learning around it. It's like, oh yeah, this is why I do it. This is why I get stuck. This is why I self sabotage. Um. <laughs> The piece that we were talking about this morning, though, about like the actions that one needs to take in order to get out of that is is where, you know, kind of like the rubber meets the road. So it's going to be an yeah. interesting conversation, given what we spoke about uh, earlier today. No doubt. Yeah. Consistency, baby. Yeah. It's so What's funny. I was, I was with somebody this weekend and we were just talking about how like everybody wants the results yesterday. And they're dealing with things that have been a struggle. Like yesterday we were talking about uh, ADHD or anxiety or things like that, right? And like people have been dealing with this for decades. They've been taking pills and medications and th whatever, right? Like smoking, drinking, running, whatever. And when you're like, well, I can actually show you simple things that you can do every single day that will actually get you there. And they're like, well, what would be, what would that be like? And you're like, well, you can start with meditation. And they're like, no, meditation doesn't work for me. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, the way the meditation has been featured doesn't work. Yeah, I, I get know. that. And it's still, it's like this, this like cutoff thing. I'm like, listen, you've been dealing with something for decades. This notion that you're going to do something or find something that's going to relieve this thing that's been running you for decades in a weekend like dude seriously like it's gonna take practice and you know if you dedicate a year worth you kind of said it on the call today with the the hypnotism right like if you do something for a year you're gonna get results i tell my team all the time like i don't care how overweight out of shape anything you are if you committed to every single day doing 30 push-ups Every day, just 30. That's what you start with. They could be on your knees. They could be against the wall. They could, whatever, you know, there's like different forms that you can do. And you did that every day for a year or even five out of seven days, let's say, for a year. You tell me you're not going to be in better shape at the end of the year? Like, bullshit. There's nothing that you can't teach yourself with consistency. Yeah. And uh, I really like that analogy. They're like, pe people like to sprint right into the results. Um and I was listening to a talk and the guy's like, he's like, well, like, look, if that worked, he's like, you go to the gym, put in 10 hours today, like work your butt off. He's like, you're going to wake up tomorrow. You're going to see no difference in your results whatsoever. None. It's not, it's not how human beings are built. It's not how our biology is built. It's not how we build habits. The real question that everyone needs to ask themselves is if they're doing something consistently, is that creating a negative result or a positive result in your life? Most people are doing things consistently that are creating negative results in their life. They're mm -hmm. drinking they're not eating well and they speak to themselves and others unkindly. That's the habits that you're forming. Now, look, a lot of that is not, we're, we just jump right in today. Uh, you know, a lot of that is not uh, your fault because a lot of that, those habits were built in a time that you didn't know you were even building habits. You weren't consciously building habits. You were in an environment. That environment had a way of doing things, had a way of voicing things, dealing with struggles and anxiety and money problems and health problems and this, that, the other. That's what you learned. That's the cards you got dealt for better or worse, right? But here's the reality is I've never met anybody who got dealt a good hand of cards. Have you, Elon, in all the years? I don't know anybody with good habits. I've never, I, Elon and I have worked in many organizations. And if we didn't work with them, we gave a lot of time to these organizations. I have yet to find a company. And I'm talking about even the biggest ones out there personal development or other companies that when you look at their internal structure of the company, it's organized or it's run well, 
or, or, or their support is fantastic. Like everything has breakdowns, everything yeah. has breakdowns. And I mean like companies I love when I saw the internals, I was like, Ooh, God, that does not run well. Companies you guys love. Ooh, not run well because people are messy. You can put all the systems and processes in place and you still have people at the end of the day running those systems and processes and they come with all their conditioning, negative or positive. And that's what you're dealing with day in and day out. Right? Like even in our community, our, 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 our sales staff, our support team, we constantly have calls. Life is happening to these people. <laughs> things that they're struggling with inside the company, things they're struggling with inside, you know, in their lives or relationships, like things happen, right? Like it's impossible to find somebody who's just like a clean sheet and whatever you want is going to happen, right? So self-sabotage, getting unstuck. Let's talk about it. <laughs> for, first thing is, um, guys, if you don't know, we have a, an incredible meditation for you that we put together into like a membership area. It's a 28 day experience. If you want it, please type in meditation in the chat box. And I will uh, throw up the little QR code for you. So you can either type in meditation and we will send you the link for that if you don't already have it. Uh, if you don't have the link, we have this nifty little thing you can do. Now, you can actually scan that QR code with your phone. It'll take you right over to the registration as well. Okay. Or if you have the chip that's inserted in your eyes, you just double yeah. blink and it'll scan. You go like this. <laughs> oh, that's how yours works? I got that's the double blink option. I went. Activate. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, scan that now so I can take that off the page in a minute. And... Uh, yeah, we got right into it today. But look, guys, at the end of the day, we're all self-sabotaging. And I want to talk to you about a few things that you can do about that. Number one is you got to admit to yourself that if, if you look at any issue that you have in your life, okay, anything at all, relational, health-wise, how you feel internally, um, financial, first question you want to ask yourself is, is this new? So write or downer. You might want to put this in a post-it note somewhere, right? On your on your screen or something. Is this new? And if you need me to put that back up, just drop in the chat box. You need that QR code back up. I'll get it up for, for you, okay? If the answer to is this new, the answer is no. And here's how you know. It feels the same way. It has this, this um, experience of being known. Like I've been doing this since I was a kid. Because usually when we ask somebody, is this new? The answer is almost always no. And then we say, how long have you been doing this? And they're like, they usually say for as long as I can remember and probably even before that. And that would make sense. Because again, your, your core habits, your fundamental foundational habits were formed at a time where you don't have memories of. And for a period of that time, you didn't even have language. This is pre-verbal, pre-cognitive. And I don't know whether you know this or not, but logic, the logical part of the brain doesn't even come online till seven or eight years old or older, depending on specific development for a certain child. Girls and boys would even be different here. Girls would be about two years more advanced than boys. Um, there's all these amazing studies right now about education and, and why it's actually literally unfair to put boys in the same age group as girls in school because the girls are so much more advanced and why um, kids born uh, at the earlier part of the year and are younger in that grade are literally developmentally not broken or deficient. They're just not at the same developmental level. And so they literally don't have the same opportunities, not in school for the rest of their lives. I don't, I just, I want to cite this because this is so wild to me. Back in the eighties, this couple was watching a hockey game in Canada. Uh, and, and it was like their national team and they were statisticians. And when they looked, it just so happened to be that the birthdays of all the players were on the, were on the stat line that they were looking at, like at all their birthdays. And so the wife points to the husband. She's like, did you notice this? And what they saw is that almost everybody in the national team was born between January and April. It was born in the early part of the year. Whoa. And as, statistic as statisticians, they knew that this was uh, highly improbable that so many of the people who were on the, this, you know, the, basically the best team in, in the country were of the same um, around born around the same time. And so they were like, that's fascinating. And so they looked across every sport across any country and these statistics held up. Whoa. Yep. They looked across all educational facility 
like how people who excel go to MIT, Harvard, same statistics held up. Why? Because I'm born, I'm born in September and I could tell you, I was always the youngest in my grade. When the school year started, I would turn the age that everybody already was the year before. Now I, I could tell you from personal experience, I was put into remedial classes. They told me I had speech problems. They told me I had reading problems. They told me I had every other problem. And I remember looking at those kids in the more quote unquote advanced classes when I was in elementary school thinking, I could be in those classes. Why am I not in those classes? And I got stuck for five years in those fucking remedial classes with, you know, not, not great people learning very, very bad habits, PS. And so what they found is, is that it's not a matter of there's more smart people in that age group. It's that they are literally, physically, biologically, developmentally older. And so they excel where somebody who's a year behind, because when you're seven, eight years old, even 11 or 12, that one year in development makes a huge difference in your in your brain's capacity to process information. So it's like you, that everybody else basically has a year head start on you if you're younger. And so over a lifetime that carries on and people who are born, generally speaking, in the beginning of the year and are one year developmentally older do better in life. How fucking crazy is that? And so all these sports teams and, you know, all these things and Olympics, this holds true, literally pick from a third of the potential talent pool that they can be getting talent from because this passes on through an entire lifetime. How wild is that? So right now there's a movement in schools to uh, hold back kids and, and parents are doing this because they started to realize that this is happening. And now it's begun this educational arms race because now they're holding back. So now the age that's older is holding back. And so there's a, this discussion to change this approach to education to actually make it fair. And again, we're talking about girls who are two years developmentally older than most boys at the same time who should be significantly more advanced in, in education and, and other uh, facets of um, biology and life. So anyway, just thought that that was a really, really interesting thing. But this way or that way, you know, the reason anybody I know is good at anything is because they do something on a regular basis, right? Like I was just telling the team, I'm like, I, I, I'm always experimenting with new things. I've been doing uh, hypnotherapy for the last two months, nonstop day in, day out. I just bought a course online, just doing that. Uh, certain practices that just not because somebody tells me it's good. I'm like, oh, okay. That matches with what I know creates healing. That matches with what I know creates transformation. And it's a slightly different, oh, okay, I see how I can approach and find this new portal inside of my system. Let me play with that. Boom. You know, like huge ex exponential growth when I start applying it. However, the point is that I want to tell you guys, the only reason Elon and I are where we are, and my, my teacher has been telling me this for six years, he goes, you are the most committed student I have. He goes, you show up every single week, you do the work. That's why you are where you are. And I want to tell you guys, it's exactly the same thing. And I'll tell you what we told our team this morning. Your spiritual life, I'm not talking about your religious life. If you have that, that's fine. Your spiritual life, who you are as a person, how you feel about yourself, your connection to the divine, however you, again, articulate that, it is what you're here for. It is your only job. If, you, if, you know, if there were no jobs out there, if we didn't talk about money, if we didn't uh, have things that you had to do, anything else, like the core of what you would focus on in your entire life would be your spiritual life. And even though we've created this structure in our society that we have to do all these things or we get to do all these things, but most people feel like they have to do all these things. You want to understand that all of those things are being shaped, are being created, you are, you are relating to them, everything from where it is that you view your life from. And mostly we view our life from our habits, from our patterns. This is there's like these eye filters we have on, these ear filters we have on, these brain filters we have on that just filter everything that's coming out through life and it's being filtered in through your patterns. And so if you want what you see to change, if you want your relationships to change, you got to change the filter. But the filter is the habits. It's the underneath programming. <clears throat> and, if the, and if the programs that you have, you know, for better or worse, took a hundred thousand repetitions to get there with awareness, you can reprogram yourself much, much faster. You know what I, I just, gotta, yeah. And hold on. I just want to cite again, a study here and I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was something like if you take a professional athlete 
who, you know, like a baseball player or a hockey player who has been working on a certain mechanical thing, right? You understand they're doing the same thing a million times over, right? To throw a curveball, to throw a breaking ball, to hit the puck a certain way, to kick a ball a certain way. How many times have they done that? But uh, what does an athlete, a, a, a sport athlete have who's a professional have that someone like me and Elon don't have? Elon does in tennis because he, he pays so much attention to it. But what they have is a, a keen awareness on the nuance of what they're doing. This little movement. Elon always says how he like, you know, his his shot got a little bit better when he moved his racket like two millimeters that way and held it a little bit different. Changed his whole game, right? Just that little awareness of mechanics. So there's a study that says if me and you try to change like a physical habit, like a mechanical habit, it's going to take, I think it was like somewhere between 10 and 30,000 reps. I actually want to say it's the higher one, like 30,000 repetitions. But for a professional athlete, it would only take 3,000. Wow. 3,000. Wow because of their level of awareness is what is what radically changes it. And so again, like what's behind the action is that person's awareness, is their spirituality, is where they're viewing from and their capacity to change. And so if you want to change faster, guess what you got to work on? You got to build on this facility, this faculty that allows for that change to occur more quickly because otherwise you are going to attach yourself and you're going to anchor yourself to old ways of being old ways of doing things. And I, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you don't have a third party, objective party that's outside of your own world, looking in and reflecting back to you, you can't even see what you're doing. Nope. Because, because it's just like, you have to have somebody. Like if a coach didn't tell me to get my head out of my own ass when I'm doing something, whether and, and this happens all the time. He's like, what the fuck? And this are you is doing just, that? just this is some he's saying this to guy who has done twenty plus years of personal development That's work. Right, but, but who has like invested you. every single day in it and still finds his head in his ass. Head in my ass. But but just the same way, because I'm I've opened my aperture, my I, my malleability in my awareness is I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. I don't mean this in an egotistical way is far surpassed most people on this planet because I, because I've trained myself to be malleable. I've trained myself not to be stubborn in my beliefs. I'm like this person that I trust, that I love, that I've worked with for so many years is telling me that what I'm doing is hurting me. It's not working. And he's giving me a completely different pathway. I got to open myself up and pay attention and say, okay, great. Thank you for that. And it hurts. Don't get me wrong. There is a part of me that gets crushed by that. But if I avoid that part, because that's the part that's hanging on, it's like, mm, you hurt me. I'm not going to do that. Right. And it's like, and it wants to get so stubborn, but I built all this awareness in my system that goes, oh, when that part comes up, this is the moment for change. Right, like most of you guys will ask a question right now. I'll say, hey, tell me how you feel about this or that. You won't answer in the chat box. You're too scared to get it wrong than to you could voice your opinion on it. I know this. I know this because we've been doing this for 11 fucking years, asking people questions. Everybody's always waiting for someone else to raise their hand first and give the answer. It's safer that way. But what I learned is when I'm sitting in a chair and someone asks a question, am I heartbeat is beating through my chest that's the best time to raise my hand even if i don't know what i'm going to say to share because i have something important to share and it's because it's important that it makes me nervous and anxious and so it's important to be able to learn that when those parts come up and you feel those things a you know how to sit with them you don't avoid them anymore you actually learn okay this doesn't feel good but it feels good when it's liberated. And that's the whole point. This work is not about making you feel good. We always say this, it's not about feeling good. It's about getting better at feeling. You're having these expressions in your body that your mind is programmed to avoid and stay away from and it doesn't like it and it has those opinions and it's ruining your fucking life. It's ruining the potential of your life. And if you want off that hamster wheel, you got to go into those dark recesses of your consciousness and you got to learn how to sit with it. But I promise you one thing, you do that with somebody who's trained to do that and it's going to change your fucking life.
you do that by yourself and you're going to get dragged back down into the that shit over storm and over. over and over again. And it's going to rehabituate the very habits that you're trying to get out of. That's why insights and books and all these things don't work because you need an objective party at least. And I'm telling you, as a humble student of 20 years, I would never go into these places inside of myself by myself. And I have incredible capacity to do that anyway. And there are practices certainly that I sit by myself, meditation and all sorts of things, but I know keenly aware today, it is impossible for me to transform my life by myself. We are biologically built as packed creatures. We are society built creature. We literally die without relationships. It literally kills us. And so you need to understand your biology. You need to understand your psychology and your spirituality and your energetics and that there's a need that's trying to get met here. And if you learn what are these needs that I'm trying to get met, and if I can build an environment around me where I spend 90% of my time getting those needs met instead of 99% of my time not getting those fucking needs met, what am I going to rehabituate in my life? And we're telling you guys, it does require commitment and it does require you being uncomfortable. Heaven forbid you are uncomfortable for a second. You want to, you want to go build a, a, a Greek, you know, a body of a Greek God. Guess what? It's uncomfortable. You don't go to the gym and lift weights and go, this is fucking fantastic. This is so comfortable. I love feeling sore, but that's the price of admission. Nothing in this world happens with complete comfort. It's, com it's uncomfortable until it's comfortable. But I, can, I have never seen anybody transform, heal, repair, do anything worthwhile in their life without it first being confusing and frustrating and uncomfortable. But when you get past that and you finally build that new foundation, oh my God, thank God. And then you build a resilience and you go to the next one. You're like, I got more. I got this next thing. And, 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 you know, Anthony's saying no pain, no gain. It doesn't have to be painful. It's pain is not what I'm saying. But when you go into parts of you that you've avoided your whole life, there's no way you're going to look at that and be like, that's fun to look at. That's fun to experience. That's really good. It's, it's going to be uncomfortable. But I promise you, with the work that we do here, the reason it's, it's somatic healing in nature, the reason it can repair your nervous system, the reason it repairs attachment systems, it's only one thing is you're going into it and you're sitting with it, but you're sitting with it in a way you've never done it before. That's the difference. Most people, when they go into those places, they're, re like I said, are re-experiencing their trauma over and over again. Of course, I wouldn't want to do that. I, I don't want that for you either. That's ridiculous. That's insane. And, and to be perfectly blunt, unfortunately, that's what, mostly what talk therapy does for you. You understand the problem. You go into it again. You re-experience the trauma and you wonder, huh, how come this I'm not getting out of it? Because it's the quality of awareness that's there in, in the way the therapy is taught in a traditional manner does that does not bring in the part that's most important, which is attunement and energetic awareness. And when you bring those two in and you do some of the things that they do in talk therapy that are great, you start healing rapidly. I cannot tell you, and bro, I'm sorry, I'm talking so much, but I'll hand it over to you in a second. But like, I cannot tell you how many therapists we have spoken to over the years and how many people who have done therapy for 10, 15, 20, 25 years that get nowhere with it. I remember Elon and I got off a stage a few years ago in, in Austin or somewhere. I don't remember where we were. And this guy walked up to me. He had his own therapy practice for 16 years that he had shut down. He was recently divorced. Devastated about both, by the way, because I could tell he really wanted to serve people. But the reason he shut down the practice was after 16 years of doing this shit, no one was getting better. <laughs> and do you understand when you get into that work and you genuinely want to help people and you find that you aren't? pretty debilitating. It's, it's, it sucks, right? You're like, this is the thing that was supposed to be the promise line for people. I told them one thing about responsibility. One thing took five minute conversation. Barely. He started bawling his eyes out, breaking down in front of me. I said, what's, what's going on? He goes, I understand why my marriage didn't work. And I understand why my business didn't work and why I wasn't helping people. Five minute conversation. It's just, it's just not part of the ethos of that culture. So Honestly, guys, look, if you're here, you're free to hang out as much as you want. This group is free. We'll keep doing training. We'll keep telling you how things work. <laughs> Hopefully make you laugh once in a while. Excite you and motivate you and inspire you once in a while. However, 
if you are really wanting to transform your life, guys, you, you got, what is it? The Goa, Elon? Uh, the law Goa. of Goya. Goa. Law of Goya. You got to get off your ass. You got you to gotta do something about it. You got to commit to new practices and philosophies in your life. And you got to be in an environment that holds you accountable for the results that you say that you want. Now, we understand that some of you guys are dealing with financial hardships. Welcome, welcome to society. And I don't mean to belittle your circumstances at all. I don't. But here's the thing. If you're looking at something, whether it's our program or something else you want in your life, and you're like, life has been going the same way for 20, 30, 40 years now, and it has not changed with the, what you've tried. And what you've tried is, and every time you want to try something, you go, well, I don't have money to do that. Oh, this sounds good, but I don't have money to do that. Well, this sounds good, but I don't have money to do that. That's fair. Maybe you really don't have money. But here's the thing. People who don't have money and you end up finding them five, 10 years down the road and they are wildly successful and had a huge turnaround. What happened in that moment is they got resourceful. They opened up their mouth for the first time and say, hey, I really need support with this thing. Can, can you help me out? Or they went and got a loan or a credit card or something that enabled them to do something about that. Because again, like your, your reality is a reflection of the foundation of your belief systems. And so if you want to see a different reality, you got to change that. You got to change the foundation. You got to change what's underneath. And you got to find anything, whether it's with us or somebody else, that allows for you to go in there and really look at it and say, here's what's not working. And here are the things that are proven to work for every human being. And if you want to know why Elon and I speak so confidently about this stuff is because for 20 years, we have been running nonstop experiments on ourselves and giant communities of people, thousands of people to say, when we apply this, does this universally work for everyone? Yes, put it in the program. Put it in the program. Do that, teach them that. And it's not just the, the thing. We're like, what's the simplest thing? And we can tell you the number one practice that we have, the number one thing that we can do that Elon and I teach inside of our, 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 our communities is literally the easy, it's so dumb, it's so easy. We literally tell people, we're gonna tell you after 20 years, million dollars invested, here's what works. You do this, your life will change. And we're like, listen, we, we preempted like this. We're like, this thing is so simple. It seems so stupid that you are not gonna do it because you don't understand right now from where you're sitting, the impact of this simple five to 10 minute daily practice. You, you don't have to do it daily. You can do it three, four times a week, still massive headway, repair the nervous system, repair trauma, uh, find safety in your body. Like if, if I told you there's something you could do at five minutes a day that would repair all those things, I ho would hope that you would throw millions of dollars at me to discover what, it, what that thing is. Because not only are you gonna change your life, you're gonna change the life of, of everybody around you because when you calm down, they calm down. When you feel safe, they feel safe. When you're repaired, they repair. We are just living mirrors. And, and guys, that's what's here. But you need someone to hold you accountable because the week after we tell you, go do this practice, you're going to show up and go, I didn't do it. And we're going to have to look at why you didn't do it. And unhook that little piece for you so you can go, okay, I'm going to go do it. And sometimes this goes on for months for people. With everything I just told you, still goes on. And that's why we need each other. We need somebody to say, your head's up your ass. Pull it out. Go do that thing this week. Come back to me in a week. Report back to me. And they're like, I did it this week. It's amazing. We're like, uh-huh. And there's nuance in that. Just like when you're an athlete, nuance things. And as you learn the nuance, it's only going to get better. You're only going to feel better. That's what's here, guys. Uh, you were talking and I was thinking that you know, we always say this line, like, it's not about feeling good. It's about getting better at feeling. And we're talking about self-sabotage today. And you were talking about filters. And somehow, like, I got this visualization, right, that I, and I know just, I'm going to say this. And I think some, your mind is going to be like, no, 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 no. So just check this out with me for a second here. The filters that create your reality right? Like the way that you view the world, the way the world is to you are all there to protect you, 
right? Like they're there to protect you from seeing something, hearing something, experiencing something that's going to touch that core wound, right? And so if you look at it from that perspective, self-sabotage, the thing that you guys keep bumping up against because you're like, this is ruining my life, is actually there to protect you and to make you feel good. And I'm really putting that in quotes because I know when it's self-sabotaging, you don't really feel good. But the mind's job is to help you at all costs avoid the thing that guy's pointing to, which is the root cause that's spurring all of it. That root cause that got created is what created your filters, right? Because the filters are now on a lookout to try to stop the world from appearing like it's gonna touch that thing. So the filters were created through that. So now you can only see a world through a certain way. So now you need someone to come and be like, no, try these glasses on because this is not helping you. And then you take those off and you look and you go, whoa, that looks very different. Now that gets you closer to having a, a more real experience, let's say. I'm not saying the real one, but let's say a, a, a different, more real experience that's not set up from just the protection mechanism. And then that other thing is like, Everything, every self-sabotage is simply to move you away from touching that fear. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, I don't want to self-sabotage myself around relationships or I don't want to self-sabotage myself around my health or around my money. But the truth is, the way you are currently wired, the mind has no other way. It's going to keep doing that over and over and over. Because if let's say the core wound or one of the core wounds was that you uh, experienced abandonment, someone was not there for you, either physically, emotionally, it doesn't matter, right? And there's that peace inside. Then guess what's going to, what, what is going to rub up against that every time you get intimate in a relationship, right? you're going to start rubbing up against that wound because all these thoughts are going to be like, but if I really let myself in, if I really let myself go into this relationship, I'm going to hurt myself again. I'm going to get hurt. They're going to leave me because now remember, this is the, the perception that you're going through. Everyone leaves me. No one's there for me. Why would this be any different? And so in order to make yourself feel good as in not get this like deeply deeply hurt right i'm not saying feel good i'm just saying like not deeply hurt because that's what we're trying to avoid that horrible horrible pain that we experience you're going to sabotage it and how often does the sabotage lead you to the beginning of your story and it proves the whole thing over from the beginning you see I knew this is how it's going to end up. It always ends up this way. I always end up with uh, losing a job. I always end up with some sort of ha thing happening with my health. I always end up with, you know, uh, a broken relationship. Like it never works for me. And that still somehow is better to the mind than you actually going and experiencing that root cause. And I've started to really understand this. The more and more people I share this, the more people get it. It's like most people, what you want and what you think you need are two polar opposite things. What you want is to go out here and move a few pieces. Oh, I, if I could just change this relationship. Oh, if I just have this kind of job. Oh, if a different boss. Oh, if my kid did this. Everything, think about like what you're wanting in your life. It's all out here. I want this different. I want that different. I want this different. I want that different. And you've been playing that game most of you for a very, very, very long time. And it leads to, I'm just going to put words to what I know, because I've spoken to so many of you, it leads to disappointment and frustration. It, it leads to this feeling of like nothing ever works out for me. 
because you keep coming through the same pattern over and over and over. And I sat here over the last uh, almost week with, uh, with two of my best friends who recently, after many, many, many years of Guy and I talking to them about ayahuasca, and then being like, no, 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 no. And Guy and I know, like, I'm not attached to anyone doing anything, right? I know everything happens to someone in their perfect divine timing. Well, six months ago, they, they started to go down this journey, and now they can't shut up about it. It's literally the only thing they talk about. <laughs> and it was, like, perfectly divine timed, right? And, and that's now their experience. So now it's like that lens that I've been viewing from for the last six, seven years, now they finally get that lens. And there's no amount of me talking to them to, to highlight that for them, gives them that experience. They, you have to go have that experience. And the funny part is that all the work they were doing before, that they thought that they were actually like working on themselves, like really working on themselves. Now, if you ask them, they're like, that was bullshit. I didn't do a thing. I danced around it, I understood it, I played here, I played there, but now I actually understand, now, sorry, now I actually experience what it feels like to go and touch those parts. Not to understand the parts, to go and touch the parts. And now there's this like whole new world that's open and their speaking is different, right? And they're the way that they relate to people is different and the way that they communicate within themselves is different. And that's the missing piece. Like the way I view it, and I share this with my kids all the time, at every moment of your day, every second of your day, there's two versions of you. There's actually more, but I'm, I simplify it, right? Like there's two versions of you. And you're feeding energetically one of these two beings, every single second of every single day, every choice you make, every emotion that you have, every thought that you have, everything is feeding one or the other. And there's a way that you be, right? There's a part of you that's scared, that resists, that doesn't want to fail, that doesn't want to get swindled that you know whatever it is right like there's that part and then there's this other part that wants to get excited that wants to take a leap that wants to take an action and every second of every day your action energetically i want you to imagine there's like two tubes right every second you're filling one or you're filling the other every second and the one that has more juice is the one that's running your life. So think right now, like look at your life right now. Who has more energy and who has more juice inside? Which one? Which is the one that is operating with more fuel? And if you think that there is some sort of magical potion where you push a button and it just swings this way, I'm here to tell you, Fuck off. Does not exist. Because you have fed this thing for so long. And so all you're looking for, literally all you're looking for, is if you can catch it one out of 50 times and you go, you know what? Not right now. I understand that you want to protect me. I understand that you're afraid. I understand that you think that I might get hurt by this. And I'm okay with that. And I'm going to take that anyway. And guess what happens? 1% goes into the other tank. And then the next time, maybe you catch yourself 1 out of 25 times. And 1 out of 20. And 1 out of 10. And slowly, what begins to happen is that you flip the scales. And when you flip the scales, the voice that is currently running in your head trying to protect you at all costs will subside and there's going to be another voice that comes through a very quiet beautiful clear voice but for this to hear this one you have to be able to sit in the silence 
It's not the loud, rambunctious child one. It's the grounded, divine, certain one. And when you can begin to listen to that, your whole life will change forever. And you won't so much worry about self-sabotage or any of that because what you'll realize is that everything that is happening in your life, it's not in your way. It's not even on your way. It's of your way. It's like it arises with your passion. It arises with your purpose. It arises with who you are. It is like the, the wind and the water that can smooth stone into polished like marbles, right? It just moves and shapes you into who you were always destined here to be. And when you're on that path, Confidence, courage, joy, playfulness, fun, love, compassion. It just is of the path. Like you don't have to sit and go, how do I become more courageous? It just is. And so look, you can go and you can keep reading books and you can keep watching videos and you can keep trying to find this magical potion thing, all of which will delay the inevitable truth that you're going to arrive to at some point in the near future, which is a, the only way out is in. That's it. If I'm doing work out here, I'm not doing work. I'm moving stuff around. I'm moving rocks around, but I'm not actually doing anything right. Here is where the work is. So that's a and B which might take a little bit longer even, is that I cannot do this on my own. And your mind will convince you because here's the truth. If it's on, if you're doing this on your own, who controls the script? And this can create any scenario and any story. It'll make up whatever movie it knows can entertain you enough. It'll make you feel like you're progressing. It'll make you feel like you're getting real smart, but you're playing with the same thing that's also created all the blocks and all the protectors and all the protection mechanisms. This is the one that's telling you like, oh yeah, yeah let's go read that book. That book is very interesting. Avoidance. Yeah, it, it's all avoidance, right? Because what it wants is for you to not feel that hurt and pain. That's its job. And it's doing a damn good job at it. And I tell every single person that's ever registered for our Awareness Effect Academy level one, two, or three, I tell them the same thing. You just saying yes and registering will be one of the biggest moments of your entire life. It's a line in the sand moment. It's a moment that while this is screaming, no, something inside of you knows, because this knows that everything that you're going to do here, you're, it's going to tell you, and you're going to figure out all the little tricks it has, how it keeps you where you're at, why you're stuck. Like you're going to know all the little things. It doesn't want you to know any of those things. It wants to have the control over you. And so when you do that, it takes something because you're starting to listen to something other than the mind that's been running your show. Right. And so whether that takes you this next hour or whether that takes you the next 10, 15 years, it took me 15 years to get there. I hope it does not take you 15 years. Luckily, I, I started this when I was much, much younger. So it's all good. But your life is ticking. And your conversations around money or health or relationships or that desire to have inner peace or well-being. It's not really going to shift. 
Like you need, we all need reflection. Without it, you're just rowing in the same waters that you created, trying to find your way out of the lake that you man built. <laughs> yeah. I like the fire today. I, I, I like do. Just real quick, yeah. I, I have that uh, memory that just came through where it's like uh, you're sitting there and you're like trying to you're you're like in a in a cage and you're like trying to bend the the cage and get out and open and then you know like oh. and then someone walks by and they're like what are you doing and you're like I'm gonna get us out of this cage I'm gonna get us out of this cage and they're like um, turn around man we're not in a cage right and you turn around and you realize that you've just been like trying to bend bars that are just there that you you created the cage like there's never a cage to begin with but it takes someone to come and go like turn around yeah you're like oh wait the, it's like, like i'm not locked like the, the monkey with the banana trick yeah those of you guys that don't know what that is like a monkey is sitting in a cage and sees a banana outside the cage puts his hand through the bars of the cage grabs the banana so it's trying to get the banana through the cage, which doesn't really make sense because a monkey can probably squeeze a banana broken, but maybe it's a stick or a metal pole. But anyway, it tries to get it inside and of course starts getting frustrated that he can't get back his hand and all he has to do is drop the banana, right? So look, I'm, we see a lot of you guys in the chat box. We see a lot of you guys in our mini chat. We see a lot of you guys in our ticketing system, right? Like we talked to our team. We know we have a pretty good pulse on the, on the community at large. A lot of you guys, we know want to do this work. A lot of you guys use money as a means to not do this work. Again, I don't actually know what your financial situation is, and I know financial hardship. Elon and I are, are, are children of immigrants. We know financial hardship very, very well in our lives. And there have been many times in our lives where we really wanted to do something and we didn't have the financial wherewithal to do it. And every single time, you have two choices. You can either let your finances dictate the direction of your life, which is how most people live, if I'm being truly honest. It's like money in the bank account, that's the quality of my life. And you're waiting for the money to be somewhere else to have a different quality of life. Doesn't change. Again, how long has that been going on for? You gotta be, you gotta get honest with yourself about that. We say, again, we could tell you stories up the wazoo of hiring coaches that were fifteen thousand dollars a month, about programs when we were in our early twenties that we didn't have three thousand dollars each to pay for, that we sold cars to get there. We understood something very early on. I'm very grateful that we did. And we understood that our mindset and our spiritual lives are the most important thing. And everything else is that's the soil from which everything else grows from. And so if we're going to invest our time and money into anything, it's going to be in making sure that that soil is, is as healthy as it can be. And for 20 years, and I'm not saying we're, we're exactly where we want to be in our, in our financial lives, but Every, everywhere I look, Elon and I have lived a magical 20 years. That if we told people what the ride has been, most people would probably not even believe that we've done all those things. And, and for those of you guys that know my story, a, a very depressed, like I, I am quote unquote depressed by nature, right? Like I, I'm a person with high anxiety. Uh, I get, I used to rag on myself. I'm like, I, I joke now, but I remember doing a job interview at 20 years old when the person would ask me what my skill sets are and I literally ragged on myself. I told them what wasn't good about me on a job interview because I was shaking so badly inside. I was like, if I tell them there's anything good, it feels disingenuous. <laughs> and then I wouldn't get the job. Like that child, me, was going down a certain pathway. And I can tell you that the pathway I was going down was not a good one. It was suicide. It was suicide. I very much had a very clear idea inside my head, I knew by my 21st birthday, if these demons, quote unquote, that I've been living with for seven years weren't gone, that I have exacerbated my patience and my energy in dealing with them. And the only way I can see out of this mess was to not be in this mess anymore. I'm not joking. An intervention happened at 19 years old. I went and did a class. I spent three days there. And at the end of those three days, I was never the same way again. I got on the phone with my parents on Saturday night. It was a day and a half into the program. And I had had this silly little thought in my head because I had invented the story when I was 14 years old when I watched uh, uh, my best friend's father die. And the determination I came to at that point in time, I clearly remember this, was saying bad things happen to good people. That was the, the context through which I began to live life 
through. And I believed I was a good person. So what do you think started happening to me? A lot of bad things. And I had this, this like, you know, moment where I had to deal with my mind and I had never even considered at that point in time in my life that the stories I had been telling myself inside of my head and the context that I was living inside of was not true. It never even occurred to me to even have that thought. And I was living in Boston at the time and I was walking home at a 15 minute walk in Quincy Market to the red line to go back to my school on this hour and a half long subway ride. And I remember walking down the street and this, and they had mentioned this distinction and I had this like record playing in my head about this man's name was Kenny. My friend's name is, was, was Jake. And I was thinking to myself, could it be that I made all that up? Could it be that I invented a story and I've been leaving, believed it hook, line and sinker. And I was just like, I couldn't get this out of my head. And I shit you not, but I was walking down and you can't explain when these things happen to you. It's just something, something snaps. But I was walking down the stairs to go back to the subway. And it was maybe like the third, somewhere between the third and the seventh step down. But I remember my right foot lifted up off the stair. And by the time it came down on the next stair, I knew for a fact that I had made all that up. It was an, it was an instantaneous uh, determination and registration in my brain. I was like, yes, I made all that up. Now, I had a, a buttload of evidence as to why that was true. Like, if you would have asked me about it at that time, I'd be like, this is what's going on. This is the world, world events, things that happened to me. Like, the evidence was insane. Like, if I went to court with that evidence, I'd win that case every single time. But all it took was to understand that there was a, a preliminary thing that happened that then had my mind go look for all that evidence. And the moment I took that thing out, all the evidence no longer mattered. It was circumstantial. And I got on that subway and I was buzzing like literally like my energy was freaking out nobody was on the uh, subway with me it was very late it was like 11 p.m 12 p.m and i was just like oh my god i'm free i'm free i'm free i'm free i'm free and i, I and like i wanted to find the nearest person and just tell them what i had discovered because it was liberation i was experiencing liberation for the first time in my life and it, and it made me high like i was literally buzzing inside of my system i remember it was like smoking pot or something everything looked different and I, and I just don't tell the story enough, but like the, the day after I woke up and I remember seeing trees and the green of the tree was like, I hadn't seen a tree in 15 years because the, the, the biology, the physiology grayed my world. Our, our ability to hamper ourselves and to make ourselves small and feel shitty it, we, there's no end. You can have whatever you want in life, the best and the worst. But that, that was my reality. And, and this kind of work changed that boy's future. And I'm still doing the work today to change that boy's past because I, under, I understand today that time is a fictitious thing that human beings have made up in their little heads and it doesn't exist. Time is one thing. It's happening all the time. So the everything I'm doing today in my spiritual life is impacting my timeline in reverse and forwards as well. And all the multidimensional realities that I get to live in are being impacted simultaneously by the work I'm doing now. I'm helping heal that little boy so he doesn't have to go through that over and over again because that was fucking torment for that child. This work, we underestimate the power of it. And people like our friends, uh, Ben and Sarah, who Elon was talking about, that's the re reality you come to when you do like plant medicine work. It's like, Holy shit, that's how much say I have over all my lifetimes, over the shit that happened before and the shit that's going to happen to me in the future. And so our contention, when we started doing this kind of work six, seven years ago, this energetic awareness work that we bring to you guys, we tell you, if you do this work, it's going to gar guarantee transform your life. We've never seen it not work. I want to relay that to you again. We've never seen it not work. Show me anything on this planet that you can buy or do and know with certainty it's gonna work for somebody. And it, it works because these are universal truths for humanity that we have discovered and forgotten and discovered and forgotten over and over and over again. It is in our biology to remember it. And so it just works and you gotta show up. You gotta do the work. You gotta do the work.
And I can tell you the investment here, whether you think it's high or low, is nominal in comparison to what you're gonna learn and how it's gonna impact your life. For, for roughly $1,000, you can change the course of your life. You guys spend $1,000 on a phone annually or on a fucking TV that numbs your brain and steals your resources. You have no problem doing that. I see homeless people in the street on fucking TikTok. You got to figure out what your priorities are. And if you don't have it, we, we, we would give these programs away for free for two, if we could. For two reasons, we can't. Number one, we can't eat on air just like anybody else, right? Like we got to take care of ourselves and our family. And number two, Elon and I have spent a boatload of time becoming extremely knowledgeable in this area. And we are passing along wisdom to you at a fraction of the time and cost that it has taken us to do that. If you could sit with Einstein for an hour and pick his brain, how much would that cost you? How much, how much would you invest in that? If you could sit with the number one health advocate on planet earth, if you were unhealthy for an hour of your time to change your life, how much would you invest in that? that that's what we offer here. We will change your life. Not we, we will guide you how to change your own life because you need to empower yourself. That has nothing to do with Elon and myself. We continue to do the work. And for whatever reason, we have this tick inside of ours that, that makes it insatiable for us to share this with other people because we understand the impact and because this is the way that we impact the future of this entire society, of this the direction this humanity is going into, which is careening off a cliff from what they tell us. But we understand that they can't change a law or come out with a technology that's going to change all that. We got the hearts and the minds of the people need to change in order for our future to change. So we're on we're in the trenches doing that work. Hopefully you're aligned with that and you want to do that work also so you can change and help facilitate a change in the future of the species as well. So look, I actually put the wrong link above. I'll fix it the moment we get off of this uh, this thing. But over here, you guys can scan that code or go to soulsandseekers.com forward, forward slash messenger. And that's going to take over to our many chat. Okay, that's a, our messenger, basically. Sorry, to a messenger on our business page. And that's going to let you have a conversation with our team. Okay, and the reason you want to have a conversation with our team is because they're going to ask a few questions. Then they're going to send you a link that has a demo of how this work works. And that demo has two exercises, two experiments that you could run on yourself right now that are going to be like, whoa, I didn't know I can do that. I didn't know my physiology and my body can do that. And that is just a taster of the type of work that we dive into here, okay? If you watch that video, if you don't watch that video, then please don't ask him more questions because the video has everything you need. But after you watch the video, if you have more questions about how to enroll in a program, you need assistance enrolling in that program, you have certain concerns about the program, anything that might come up for you, please talk to our team, right? So while the beginning questions are automated, every single one of those conversations gets assigned to a real person who is there to speak to you and support you. And just so you know, we have no one on our team, not one single person that we've ever hired from the outside because we want everybody on our team to understand how this work actually works in their lives so they can speak about it from a first person point of view. What, what has this done for me? And so there's nobody on our team, literally not our support staff, not our operations team, not our sales team, nobody who has not been involved in this work usually for years, years and years and years before they're here. I actually can't think of anybody who has not been around this for years in this work. So I want you to know who's behind the scenes are people just like you, who three, four years, five years ago, found Elon and myself, did this work, have felt radical transformations in their lives and relationships, their health and their finances, and are here now to support other people in doing the same thing. So you're very, very, very good hands, okay? So again, if you want that support, that's where it's at. Thank you for listening to Elon and mine passionate rants today. That felt fun. Uh, Elon's fuck off was well-placed. And uh, with that said, guys, we love you very much. Thank you for being part of this community. Please go take some action. Please go do something. Please do not sit in the discomfort and pain that you're in. There is absolutely ways for you to transform that and have a beautiful life. We'd love to help you get there. Love y'all. Peace out.